Hello, Few Candy here, and welcome back to the Planet Zoo Beginner's Guide. And today, as mentioned last time, we're going to be doing a landscaping your zoo episode. So there won't be any animals put in this time, but we're going to talk all about signage, what to do in those empty blank spaces, how to make it interesting, and a little bit about very specific building designs like round shelters and how to kind of accomplish that. But before we jump in today, I do just want to show you our exhibit trading because we actually have set our exhibits to automatically store animals in the trade center, which is a really, really handy feature. And we have quite a few in there now that we can now start to sell. Now, unfortunately, most of these are the original animals that we got. So we're unable to release to the wild for conservation points, which is really what we want because we don't have many at the moment. But we do have a few that can be traded for money and we've just got this one that was born in the zoo that can be released to the wild. So that's quite a common thing. If you've bought them from somewhere else, those animals probably won't be able to be released into the wild. So that's something to bear in mind. So this one, we're definitely releasing them to the wild. We'll take our five conservation points. It's not many, but it's a start. And then all the rest of these, none of them can be released to the wild. So we're going to actually select all of those and we're going to quick trade for a little bit of cash. So we'll complete that. Now the other thing to bear in mind as well before you do that with your animal storage, in both animals and exhibits, if you're in franchise mode, all of your animals in here will be shared between all of your zoos in the same franchise. So if you had a gold star lion, for example, you could ship them into your uh, trade center and then you'd be able to pick that up in another zoo if you wanted to. So that's definitely something to bear in mind if you're on franchise mode. So let's dive right into signage to start off with. And there's so many guests in our zoo that the frame rate can drop sometimes. So I'm just going to click pause. And as mentioned before, you can limit in the options the amount of guests that are entering your zoo. So if you're having problems with frame rates, do that. Obviously, bear in mind, it's going to take a hit on finances, but you should be OK. Good ways to make money are lots of exhibit animals because they're cheap to maintain and look after and they draw quite a few guests if they're particularly kind of interesting animals. So that's one easy way you can make money. And of course, as I've mentioned previously, keep your education up, get those donation bins out everywhere in places that people are viewing animals and they're likely to donate and that will bring in a lot of money. And we also have this guest thinks tickets are underpriced element here. So we could actually come into our zoo. I mean, it's already on 35. Let's just up it to 40 and see what they say to that. And we'll see how we go. So signage, if we come into construction and go to the signs tab here, we get kind of various different things. You can see we've got wall signs, we've got standing signs, so you can flick between the two of them. There are shop signs and custom signs. So custom signs is really what we want here. And I am actually going to apply a filter to the base game only. So there's a few extra signs that you get for all of the DLCs, but I know all of you out there will probably have the base game if you're playing this game. So this is what we're going to use for this today. And there's some really nice options in it, so it's not a problem whatsoever. So we're going to put in the Indian signpost to start off with. There is the New World one, but I find it quite short for a sign. It's like almost the same height as the, the people. So I kind of prefer the slightly larger Indian sign. It also means we've got more room to add lots of different little signs to it as we go. So what we're going to do here is we're going to, we haven't got any of these on. If we said align to surface, you'll see it's going to align really oddly. So we don't want that. If you've done that, by the way, and you can't get it back, then just click away from that element and come back to it and you'll be able to add it back on. But here, what we want to do is we want to kind of align these up and they do sort of snap reasonably nicely onto it. But you do have to be a little bit careful about the position. So we're going to line it up nicely onto our pole and make sure we're happy with that. So that's no good. Let's click on it, press X, and then we're just going to drag it onto our pole. Make sure it's nice and central from all directions. So that's looking pretty good. And then we'll also want to kind of angle it in the direction that we want as well. So let's click X again and just make sure we're pointing this way. And on here, we can then customize the text. So I'm going to write African penguins on this one and you do need to press enter to have it appear on the sign. And then we can change the font if we want to here as well. You can kind of experiment with them. Carter one is quite nice. Some of them are a little bit more difficult to read. Noto Sans is usually pretty clear. And then you can choose the text color. So you can see here the text edge color. If we change that, for some reason, the black isn't actually showing through. Oh, there it is. We can have a black edge with a white body or we could have just black text. That kind of stands out a little bit better to me. So I'm going to go for that. 
If we also go to color editor here as well, we can change the color of the sign. So I am also going to do that. I don't know what we found a fancy for this. I don't mind the sort of light yellow. We could go to the color wheel and change that a bit more specifically if we wanted to as well. Maybe a slightly more orangey kind of color. It blends into the background quite a lot like that. So I think I'm going to go for actually a similar blue to what the sign color comes in at because it's quite nice. So yeah, we'll have that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to click on the sign. We're going to click Control X and we're just going to move up to another one. And then we'll hit tick here. And then I'm going to click escape on my keyboard and go back into this one. And we're going to edit this text. And we're going to say underwater world because that's ultimately what we're going to have in this direction. Once we, oh, I've spelt it wrong. That's better. Once we get in our seals as well, because we've got a little underwater tunnel that goes past the penguins and the otters now too. So we'll have both of those in. And then we're going to add in a few more little signs here too. So we'll click Control X again. And then what we're going to do is we're going to rotate this and nicely the text is on both sides. So that's a really good thing to note too. And we can have a sign going this way, I think. Actually, we're going to have multiple signs. So let's click tick there. Click X again and we're just going to drag this down. But we want to have the lemurs, mandrills. I think that'll probably do for that direction. Let's click X on this one and we're going to change the direction again. We're going to have it more pointed this way to kind of indicate going around this path. And that's going to be the sloths. And then we'll also want one for the otter habitat as well, I think, here. So let's leave it like that. If we had more specific areas like an African area or something like our underwater world, then that's probably like a good thing to put on these rather than all the specific animals because you'll run out of sign space quite quickly. I would say doing that if you've got a large zoo. But for now, we'll do that. And I think actually I am going to add in one more right at the top here, which is then going to say Central Plaza, which is what we're going to be coming on to next time. So we can add that in for now. And that gives a nice little sign, a directional sign for showing people where to go around the zoo. So I quite like this as little features to add in. You can obviously direct people to toilets or food courts or anything you like on these signs. You could write whatever you want. So yeah, it's a really nice little thing and a little way to add a little bit of realism to your zoo. Now, if we click shift, I'm going to select all of these because I've just realized it's kind of not exactly positioned where I want. So I'm just going to move it on the red and blue axis there. and We're going to put it back into the grass this side. So that gives kind of slightly more accurate directions there. So we'll click tick on that and then that one is nicely paced. So I'll go around the zoo and add a few more of those in later on. But that's the kind of general idea when it comes to just basic signs like this to direct people around your zoo. Now, another thing that you can do with signs is actually create your own. So by using these little panel screens here, you can import your own kind of designs and create a sign from that. So these again can be put onto screen mounts or onto poles if you want to. There's various different sizes of them. And the good thing is when you put these up, so let's use the kind of screen panel one by one because I think these are the most useful. If you click on the panel itself, you see you can replace the image. So you can choose kind of some of the branded ones that are already here, like Gulpy or Missy Donuts, and you can select advertising targets for them if you want to. Um, there are other ones which are tall, but they all kind of get squashed if you put them on a, on a square panel. So it's not that useful. You're kind of only really limited to just the brands, essentially, that are here for advertising. But if you want to create your own, if you click on the panel, oh, let's zoom back out. If you say example, this will be a tall image. This is a square image, a small PNG. What you can do is go to a photo editing software and you can see here it's 512 by 512 pixels. So that's what you want to basically create as a canvas that is that. And then you can click the image if you have it saved in your folder and add it. So I've got like some of the mandrels here. We're not going to do that just by way as an example. But that tells you what size you need to be able to create an image for it. So of course you could do two split ones if we said we wanted to go move this one down and click this one underneath. You could create two images of 512 pixels and have them both here to create like a longer, taller advertisement if you wanted to or a kind of a sign for your zoo. So that's the way you create your custom signage. And also just to note in here as well, this tells you the folder that you need to put your photos in once you've downloaded them in either PNG, JPEG. So all the information that you need to create that is actually contained within the different signs. So if you choose different sizes, you can see what you need to do in order to be able to create your own custom signs. 
we're not going to do that now but if you would like a more detailed episode on custom signs then please let me know and we can go into that it's kind of fun to play with but obviously you need to have some editing software there are free ones that you can use so canva you can go into canva create a canvas of 512 by 512 and use some of their default images if you wanted to or add your own to it create whatever you want in there and that is a free software so go and check that out if you're curious about making your own signs but looking at this wall we definitely need to do something with it so what i'm actually thinking is we are going to come into media devices and education and specifically education here and we're actually going to add some conservation boards to this wall because it's such a like plain brick wall it just looks strange to me right now so let's turn off a line to surface for starters and then we can just use Z to kind of rotate it and move it across into place. So I think we want a few of these kind of almost built into the wall and I'm fine with just using the, the sort of backing that it has for these. You could create your own custom frames for them, build around them if you wanted to, to kind of integrate them into your zoo, but we're not doing a building episode specifically for this. So I'm just gonna kind of go the simple route and add a few of these in along our wall here so let's go like that now with the conservation screens they add education to your zoo so they are a good thing to have you can click what educational content you want to share here so it could be whatever you want there's a few different things to select from and you can of course replace the image if you wanted to with uh, what your own custom ones so <laughs> there is also that option if you so choose if you want to have your own custom conservation signs as well and I'm pretty sure they still add education, even if you add your own designs to this. So that is definitely something to play around with. Now, in terms of the board itself, we can change the colors from it. So we can play around with that if we wanted to. Let's maybe go for something a little bit brighter. We'll have a nice like, actually we'll go for green because they're leaf patterns, why not? Let's have a green kind of design on that. So let's click apply there. Once we've used that color as well, when we go to the next one, it will automatically be in our most recent so we can use it again nice and easily uh, of course if we'd done that before we copied the conservation screens that would have been a quicker method because it will copy over your color palette with it so again something to bear in mind to speed things up and then we'll go around and just choose some of the default education signs to add to these so there we go like that is super simple and a way to just make that wall <laughs> a little bit more interesting than it was previously so we've got four nice conservation signs there as people are walking along this path now again with signs there are just basic standing signs or wall signs that you can add to your various different walls uh, we did do some staff entrances early in an earlier episode but here i'm just going to actually use this basic standing sign just to create something that says asian small clawed otters here and again we'll change the color of the sign so it's a little bit more fitting like that perhaps but then underneath this we're going to take actually one of our smaller wall signs and add it to this so i'm going to say custom signs because we want to be able to edit it and i'm thinking perhaps a kind of asian themed one would be good for this this one some of them are quite large or most of them are quite large to be honest so it's <laughs> a little bit um yeah there's not very many ways to add just very small signage with the base game at least there are some smaller ones from the Australia pack, for example, like this little wood beam. I really like that. And this one as well. So I think actually we might use this from Australia pack. And then let's go ahead and write on that. And we're going to say no food or drink. Just because it's a walkthrough habitat, I feel like that's a nice little realistic touch to put onto our sign there. So that was just a basic way to do signs. And you will have seen in previous episodes, we've done things like the Mandrel Fool sign, which is kind of wood pieces all pieced together. We of course also have our prairie dog sign over here again just like letters from the construction pack so if you go into art shapes you've got this lettering so you can use some of these and apply these to any building pieces or anywhere in fact you want you could even write on the ground which is kind of a cool thing actually you can say watch your step for example as you go up <laughs> a ramp or up your steps kind of a nice little thing to do but then that just adds extra effect of course we've got the huge signage on our lima house over here as well so there's lots of things that you can do for signs i haven't kind of shown you that very basic very simple easiest way to do it really which is how we've just done it here using one of the built-in signs or two of the built-in signs in fact in this case and just adding those so that was various different ways that you can add signage to your zoo really really simply like none of those are complex kind of things to do even the directional sign that we added at the start is really really easy once you've got one of those little signs in place on your pole so go for it do it all those little features add really nice elements to a zoo as you're walking around and going around in first person which you know we all do 
So the next thing I want to look at is what you should do with open spaces like this next to your pathways. Like we have done several techniques here, which I've talked about before. So we've got the aquatic pack rocks here sunk into the ground. Uh, so they're huge, but we're only seeing a tiny amount of them and there are all lots of them in a row. And you can use those to kind of mark your path edges. Of course, you could use the actual edges that come with the path. So curb on ground path, for example, here. If we upgrade this, you can see we're getting a built-in curb to our path if you wanted to do that. But I find like this is a nice way to frame it. You can see here in this open picnic area, we haven't got any framing around the path and it sort of feels like the textures flow into one another a little bit more unrealistically, like it's a very, very sudden kind of edge to it. So I quite like adding various different borders like this. And we'll go into a few more techniques as time goes on, but this is possibly my favourite with the aquatic rocks here. So let's turn our attention to this little area here because all of this is completely undetailed around our otter food court. And what I want to do here is add in our own custom water feature. So the first thing we need to do is to add water. So for that, we're actually going to use the terrain stamp tool and I'm going to go for the cylinder one because that will give us some nice kind of sharp edges to it. It's probably the easiest way to get something that's reasonably shallow in. So this is four meters in height, so it's still, <laughs> so it's still quite deep but we're going to need that to be able to fill it with water. And width wise, could we go up to eight? I think the circle kind of pattern will be a bit interrupted with that. So I think seven is probably going to be the optimal one for us. We're going to get some janky edges with this because we're quite close to paths, but that is okay. So let's just focus on positioning our circle as centrally as we can in the middle here. I'd rather have some of the jankiness at the back where people are less likely to see it than at the front. So that feels like quite a good place. So let's go ahead and add that. So now we've got this kind of deep circular pit in here and then we're going to add some water to it. So I'm just going to do calm water for this because it's going to essentially be a fountain, but that gives us water in here. Now that looks super rough. I want this to feel very man-made. So we're going to do a lot of building pieces around it. But the main thing I want in the middle is actually some rocks. So we're going to use our temperate themed rocks for this because that's the, the main theme of our park. I'm going to choose some nice big rocks to place right in the middle of our water here. Now, the crucial thing is we need to be able to see the water around it. Otherwise, this whole thing is not going to work because we're going to have to build around the edge. Um, so that's going to be super, super important when we're choosing these rocks to put in. And I don't mind if we raise these rocks up a little bit because we're probably going to add a base to it to make it feel a bit more man-made. So let's go ahead and choose some rocks in here that would be nice and suitable. So yeah, not too large, but large enough that it's going to form a nice feature for us that we can put some ornaments on is what I'm really thinking with this. something along those lines which obviously looks super rough right now but this will do for the moment and then we're going to design a kind of fountain base around it so this is going to go into building pieces and we're going to want some concrete wall pieces but not the full four by four walls so if we search for panel we can actually get all of those wall panels up so we have got breeze blocks which could look kind of cool we've got the plain concrete which we already saw and the concrete we can paint as well so that could be interesting we have also got stone um these are all coming from various different packs i would add too if we actually filter it let's go for something in the base game the concrete does actually come with the base game or the breeze blocks i'm thinking maybe breeze blocks internally and concrete around the outside so this will all make sense in a minute hopefully once we kind of add this in but what we want to do is essentially create some walls around this fountain now so that it sort of makes sense and feels good. So if we put in a piece of breeze block wall like this, let's click Control X and then we're just going to rotate it, making sure that we're snapping to those angles so that it's perfectly 90 degree angle and then lift this up so it's in line with the top here. And if we come back into construction, let's change it to the concrete. So that same piece has just changed. We're just using the one by one panels here. So that kind of looks all right to me. 
So let's then grab both of these pieces. We'll click X, so we're moving both of them now. And we just want to align it up with the edge. Now this is the same technique that I actually did around the mandrel habitat. If we quickly take a little scoot over there. So this technique here, and actually the same pieces ironically. So we've got the concrete around the edge and the breeze block as the wall. So this is how you can create something like this to kind of block off all of those janky edges that you get when you place in water around it if you don't want to do some natural detailing. So yeah, focusing on this section, what we want to do is make sure it's kind of level to ground height so it's not sticking up too much. So that looks pretty good to me. And then what we're going to do is copy both of those, Control X, and we're just going to place this loosely around our water feature. And what we're trying to do when we do this is line up all of those breeze block walls internally around the water feature. Do not worry about the gaps in the concrete. We will come through and fill them in later. But what we want is kind of a solid wall structure around our water feature for now. something along those lines will do and then what we're going to come in and do is use the breeze block wall floor to create a kind of base to our fountain so we want this just under the water so we can definitely see that there is water there but also have it so that it's kind of visible so it doesn't look like the fountain area is too deep ultimately so that's what we're going to go ahead and place in and with it we should be able to easily snap it doesn't matter if it's under the ground we can't see it that entire base in like this. So you should be able to see now if we click play, yeah, we have got that water sitting just above the concrete base. So that's kind of important. It's not massively visible. So if we go to terrain and we click on the body of water, we can also change a few things here. So we can use natural color and we can change it to dirty water. I mean, that looks awful. Everglades, Amazon. I think we'll go for clean water, but let's turn down the transparency just a little bit so it feels a little bit more kind of yeah dense we could add some mist if we wanted to or some bubbles adds a kind of eerie effect we definitely don't need that here so let's turn that off but yeah lowering that transparency I think will help we could also change the color a little bit so it could be a little bit more blue if we wanted it to I think let's change it to like that because then we can kind of notice it and see the water a little bit more easily around the feature and then we want to put some special things up on top of it. So what I am thinking here is in construction, let's search for otter. I have to get rid of base game because it's not a base game animal. But we do have aquatic sculpture otters bronze. So I think that these would be pretty nice to use. We also have some concrete ones as well that we could use if we wanted to. I really like the bronze statues for this. So what I'd like to do is kind of decorate up this little water feature with some of these lovely sculptures here. So let's actually sink two of these into the top. So we're going to have them back to back because they work so beautifully well like this. So I'm thinking something like that across the top. We probably want to just drop those down a little bit into the rock so they're not floating <laughs> above it like that. And then we also have these swimming otters. So we could actually sort of infuse one of these into the rock a little bit, or perhaps have a couple of them kind of swimming on this bottom side of it. So yeah, again, we've got ones that are mirrored, which works so nicely for these designs. So yeah, we could have two of them nicely aligned on the bottom of the rock like that, which just gives us a nice little otter feature. And then if we search for water, this is where it can start to get a bit interesting. So what we want to have is a kind of a fountain jet for it. So we've got this jet large. If we place this down, we need to press play. You can see that shoots water up into the air really high. So you can create some kind of custom fountains from this if you wanted to. That's probably a little bit too much. We've got a water jet medium, which does the same. Or we have got a water jet small. Now this is what I'm actually thinking would be good to use here. So we click a line to surface. You can see we can spray it out. Um, and it is arching a little bit out of our fountain here. So if we put it on the side, yeah, it's hitting, <laughs> it's hitting out of the fountain. So I think what we'll need to do for this is possibly use X a little bit on these. 
So something like that isn't too bad, but what I do want to find is a prop to kind of put at the end of these. I think it may be one of the brackets so that we can kind of have something that actually marks <laughs> where that jet is coming out. So yeah, something like this would work well. And what we want to try and do is kind of line it up where that water is coming out just so it looks like we do actually have a, a point to the fountain and it's not just magically coming out of the wool. These brackets are very versatile little elements. I think I used them in the mandrel habitat to add what sort of look like nails to wood. Um, so they're very useful, one of the best props. See, I'm thinking something like that. It sort of looks like it coming out. The fountains aren't perfectly equal. <laughs> I may polish it a little bit off camera. And then let's also come back into water because we do have these like splashes that we can add at the bottom here too, which add a really nice effect. So if we just click play again, you can see it's like where it's hitting the fountain base. I think if we lift it up a little bit, yeah, it does add ripples on the surface. So let's turn off a line to surface for a second. We want it to kind of be there. Yeah, so it spreads out a bit better. So you want actually the top of these to be in line with the top of your water. Let's go like that. And then that adds a little bit of realism to the bottom of our little fountain shoots here. And then we can add a bit of extra detailing to this by adding some plants in. So maybe a little few green pieces would be nice around the otters, kind of poking out in and amongst the stone would be good here. So if we line to surface, we can find some very specific things that might be suitable for the otters to add in here. Yeah, just little bits like that, I think can add quite a nice effect to stonework. Just adds a little bit of kind of fine edge coming out of the rock ultimately. Now I do just want to turn my attention back to these concrete pieces so let's press exit here because we do have these as well and we need to fill in the gaps. So what we can do for this is let's turn off angle snap, we'll duplicate these pieces and we just need to simply move them all the way around the fountain to fill in the gaps. Now it will look really rough around the edges but that is okay, we can come in with some flower bed work afterwards to finish it off. So we've got that in and it looks absolutely terrible but what we're going to do now is come into nature and into gardening and have a look at these mulch pieces here because what we can do is add these all the way around to kind of create a flower bed border to our fountain so that will cover up some of the jankiness in the edge of the concrete. So there's a whole variety of pieces here to choose from down from like really really tiny 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 pieces i think even this one's absolutely minute so you can use that to fill some small places up to much much larger ones so like four by four squares so they're super diverse from that point of view so yeah what we're going to do now is kind of leave a little bit of a concrete border around the fountain and then add some of these mulch pieces in to fill up all of this space around it and create a really nice looking flower bed. like that. 
And then we can go ahead and start adding some flowers into our big flower bed. And of course you can use whatever you want for this. So you could be as uh, crazy as you want to <laughs> or not as the case may be. Like there are lots of nice flowers in this game to play with. So yeah, just take your time going through them all and add in what you would like to add. Now we might actually make this so that it looks like a slightly kind of new flower bed. Like it's just sort of sitting in, just been planted and nothing kind of major has happened to it as of yet. So it's not fully grown. We can see a lot of the mulch in and amongst it is what I'm kind of thinking for this. So I feel like that would be a nice thing to do. Don't forget to rotate your plants as well. <laughs> and you can, of course, add in random rotation. So let's do that. That'll make it a lot quicker for us placing it in. So it will rotate between each plant that you place in. Don't want a line to surface if it's going to start doing that. So we'll just keep them all nice and flat. But yeah, we can go ahead and just keep placing in flowers around here until we get a pattern and a design that we're happy with. I think we'll go for something like that. And then what I am going to do is actually continue on our stone border that we have had in many places because we've got it on this other side of the track. So I feel like that would be sensible for us to do the same thing here. So what we want to do is just copy a little piece of what we've got, sink it right into the ground and then frame off our flower bed with this all the way around. And the easiest way I've found to do this is turn off snap to surface. Don't go into advanced move, just actually go to move, get it to the height that you want and then keep going round and rotating it. I'll turn off uh, position rotation for this as well, rotation snap, just because it's going to be easier to get it in how you want. So there we go, we've got a nice, simple otter little water fountain in here, which looks kind of cool, I think. Frames the entrance to our eating area. It's very bright and colourful with the flower beds all around it and doesn't look too messy. There's little bits of the breeze block that I could have done better here that were gaps, so I may go around to try and fix that. But all in all, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. And that's just a nice way that you can add little extra features to your zoo as you go around, like a nice little custom water feature like this. But for the final part of today's video, we're going to focus on this little area here. Now, there's a lot of landscaping to do around the zoo as a whole. So all of this section needs doing around our monkey island, in particular, hiding this horrendous dome entrance over there. And also all of this kind of street level detailing that we want to do here. We want to create a nice little street with some props and things like that. So there's a lot still to do. And of course, actually, if I fly back to the entrance, we've got this whole area here, which is very blank. Now this I'm saving for our transport system. So we're going to have our main kind of train station or whatever transport we choose. Actually, if you have a preference or if you have an idea of what transport you want to see in the zoo, let me know, because we'll be coming on to that fairly soon. But we're going to have our main train station here and the track is going to run this way. So that is why I'm leaving that section very, very blank at the moment. But yeah, there's a lot still to do and it's not all going to be covered in today's episode. So we will come on to more of that in bits and pieces over future episodes. But I definitely want to do something with this area before we stop today. And before we do that, we do need to put in our bridge because this pathway is going to run up to a raised plaza over here with a restaurant overlooking our lake this way. So I thought next to it, it would be nice actually next to the bridge to have a little platform that sort of looks out onto the lake, which is just really a kind of very simple viewing platform, not to view any animals, but just a kind of perhaps a picnic space or a bench space that guests can go to to kind of look out over the lake and have a quiet moment in the zoo. So that's the plan, but let's firstly get in our bridge. So we go to paths, we're already on eight meters, which is the same as this path that we have in here. You can see we could just bridge straight over this, but that creates this weird, awful kind of jankiness in the terrain here. So we don't want that. So what I'm actually going to do is trim this path back ever so slightly back to here. And then we're going to re add that in. So for that, we need to hold Z and we want to try and get it straight. So at the moment, the angle snap is stopping us. So let's remove angle snap. And then if we hold Z as we put it in, hopefully we can get one coming straight out of here. OK, so I'm going to have to undo that. <laughs> go back to here and we'll start from this point which is okay so for this we're going to go into our options here we're going to click elevated length and we're going to change this down to two meters so what that means is when you kind of elevate instead of it being a long four meter stretch so let's actually click you to go up you can see it's now two meters so it's a lot shorter and adds more control ultimately for our bridge section so I think we're going to use our rustic path for this because it has a nice fencing on it. So let's bring up a very small kind of ramp section like this and then we're going to go into our bridge. 
and we definitely want angle snap turned on for this so we can go nice and straight across then we'll click J and we'll start to come down this other side and that will go back into our pavement path on this side of the bridge so that is completely unequal right now <laughs> and doesn't look good so we need to kind of perfect this a little bit so I've just deleted that back off oh although that's deleted our path so we might need to uh yeah we might have screwed this actually <laughs> <laughs> okay so if I just eyeball a piece in here hold control so it doesn't step onto the path then I can actually snap this back in so this should give us some better angles for joining this up so we'll just add in another section of path and then we're going to start raising it from here okay so we'll have one step in like that perhaps let's now delete out the path this side we'll go straight across we need to remove all of this this is just a, a very a finicky process that is hard to get right but once you get it in kind of very satisfying so let's go down with our steps again this side and then hopefully we should be able to say intersecting terrain marvelous so let's actually click control on this again let's move away from this path and what we're going to do again this side is hold control on our keyboard and eyeball where this lines up to the bridge so like that is what I'm thinking and then hopefully we'll be able to join this on so let's turn off angle snap again we'll eyeball it in straight okay and then it creates a raised section like this but what we can do because it looks odd with the uh, raised fencing on it is just remove those so if we come into here we've got railing on elevated let's turn that off let's upgrade that it does still have a curb on it though because it is elevated but i'm kind of more accepting of that to get this equal looking bridge in so that's not too bad <laughs> it could be more equal over the actual river but they're so finicky to put in and i kind of was mainly focusing on having equal slopes and steps either side so for me that's okay for now and we do have an active working bridge over our river anyway ignoring our slightly wonky bridge let's come back to this area over here and let's focus on our little viewing platform so what i'm going to do with the path here again is hold shift so that we can kind of freely move it up and down and what i want is it just very slightly raised like i don't want it to raise so i'm thinking something like that we can still see some of the grass blades through it so i know it's not super duper high and we're going to click that in and then we're going to click one next to it and we're going to go round again this is with angle snap on in a circle because if we join it up like that we get a really nice circular platform so this is going to kind of form the base of our viewing platform here and then let's turn angle snap off for this so we can move this a bit more freely and what we're going to do is just join up this pathway to our main path here um, I'm not too bothered about having the railings on this. I think that that looks okay kind of in the run up to it. Quite like them to both be straight. So something like that may be quite nice. And of course, we don't want the grass poking through. So let's go to terrain. Let's change it to grass short and we'll start spraying some of this underneath here to get rid of those grass sprites like that. So it's just a very gentle slope up to this main viewing platform. Now, what I'd like to do here is a central kind of shelter structure for it so let's go over here and we can talk about how to create round buildings so we're going to start by finding our concrete pillar which is in the base game as well so you can uh, everyone can do this everyone can make this structure and let's change it to a kind of brownish color a little bit of a wood color that'll do for now we can alter that later on now before we press it down this is really important i'm going to hold x and i'm going to change from relative to world axes just so we're building everything on the world axis so we can always kind of snap back to that which is really important when it comes to these structures so let's click tick there and then we're going to come into here and we're going to search for beam and again this is base game these planet zoo square beams we're going to go for eight meters because the path that i put in was an eight meter path so this should easily cover our circle here from a kind of radius point of view and we're going to move this all the way up to the top of our column like that then we're going to make sure we've got angle snap turned on and we're going to flip this round so that it's 15 degrees below that kind of 90 degree angle now you will see because we use x for this this is perfectly in the center here so super 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 handy for coming on to do this 
and also all of these axes are now completely flat. So then I do just want to adjust this beam so it's completely flat. So I'm just going to do that and it's kind of something you have to do with eye annoyingly, but that should be fine. So we'll click tick on that. We're going to click on the beam. We're going to press Control X. We're going to go back into our beams and choose the two meter beam this time. And we're going to zoom it all the way down to the end. Now I don't know why this has flipped again. So we're just going to have to rotate that back in line with our current pillar, sort of like that. And we're going to turn angle snap on and what we're going to do is rotate it out of this beam this way. Now I want it to be perfectly horizontal, so some of our snapping is... So I want it to be perfectly horizontal, so I'm just going to lift it up a little bit so it's not on that 15 degree angle there. And then I also do just want to rotate it very slightly so it's nicely in line with our beam this way. So we'll go like that, which should be pretty perfect on our beam. So we'll click tick on that and then we have this uh, kind of weird looking structure which is going to come together. <laughs> it will come together. So now with this whole thing what we're going to do is copy all three pieces and we're going to control X on it all. We're going to make sure that we're on world axis. Again this is where this camera's in super important. We're going to make sure angle snap is on. We're going to go to rotate and we're going to rotate it a perfect 180 degrees. And now all we do need to do is just snap this into position with the other one so we can line up those beams at the top here so they are nicely aligned and that's pretty good it doesn't have to be absolutely spot on perfect so we'll click tick on that and then we're actually going to delete out one of these beams so we'll delete out this one and this one should be pretty nicely in the center there so then what I am going to do is select all four of these pieces we're going to go to Control x we're going to make sure angle snap is on and then what we're going to do is rotate it around continuously. Now I can see already actually our beams are slightly too long on the bottom and the angle is slightly off. We're actually just going to cancel that. We're going to go back and also delete out these two sections here. And we're going to go back to this beam and we're just going to rotate it very, very slightly like this, as well as push it back into our beam so it's slightly shorter. Now we're just going to have to play with the angles a little bit to get this nicely lined up again. That's actually not too bad. So we'll click tick on that and then again we're going to repeat. Okay, so now let's try again. So we'll click all of these beams here, control X on them, and then we're going to start rotating them around. And yeah, that is a little bit better. It's still a little bit shallow. So I think instead of worrying about this, we're going to turn off angle snap and what we're going to do is free rotate so that those beams kind of meet up nicely. And then we're basically just going to keep, keep pressing tick and going all the way around like this. So there you go and you do sometimes have to just shuffle around the last couple to get them in and line them up perfectly and also I'd got my angle completely wrong <laughs> on my outside kind of circular rim so I had to go through and redo all of those. So make sure you've got your angle right when you put in your first segment before you do the whole thing. Don't try and skip it and think that it's going to look okay <laughs> if it's all wonky and not perfect to begin with. Now what we can do is come to this multi selection tool here and we're going to select all of these props. I'm going to make sure that absolutely everything is in within this. And we're going to say merge scenery into groups. So it's all now one group. Now with this, we can then move it wherever we want. And you could also save it as a blueprint as well. So I'll show you that in a second if you wanted to use it elsewhere. But what we're going to do with this is we're going to add it as a shelter. So we're going to try and get it like perfectly central in our little circular shelter area here. We're going to add it in like this. So now obviously we need to repeat that beam down to add it in, but you can see here we've got, yeah, it's all one group. So if we click on it now, 
you can click save as blueprint and then you'll be able to find it in your blueprints menu here so uh, there are various other things actually um, that I have done in here we go to my blueprints I've got various different domes that I've done in the past this whole elephant shelter various things all oh, this entire dome that I have actually saved from previous kind of work another large dome which looks kind of interesting octagonal cage i've got various different things that i've done previously also this circular roof as well for an information booth i decided to save that because <laughs> it's sometimes handy here's another one as well this little wooden sun shelter all done with exactly the same kind of techniques to it i really like this one actually we could have just used my blueprint for this so kind of handy to do that once you've created a very intricate structure now i am just going to go back to this beam actually and slightly change the color of it i feel like it needs to be more more sort of ready brown so that kind of color but a little bit browner yeah like that that's good and then what we're actually going to do with that column is Control x and we're just going to sink in another one down into the concrete so it's meeting up with the ground there and it creates these really nice shadows as well actually which are quite enjoyable we could then go ahead and put vines on it very much like that group blueprint i just showed you actually here so we could do some of this actually i think we will so it's just some of this ivy and what we can do is we say align to surface we should be able to kind of snap it onto the wooden top here yes we can so we can place in a few of these around the top of it and maybe that one's a little bit large for this so let's uh let's add a few little smaller ones like this well there are ivy pillars as well actually that would be pretty cool you just want to hold z to rotate these into place align to surface will make it super duper easy yeah there we go we've just got a bit of ivy around a few beams there and up the central pillar as well so that all looks quite good let's um come back to the path because we might want to change this based on what barriers we got and i'm thinking actually the sort of rustic one might be quite nice up here too so yeah, I think those railings look pretty nice for this. So I think we'll go for that. We could go for something darker perhaps because of the dark wood we've got on the edge. Maybe a wooden platform wouldn't go kind of unnoticed. The pavement raised up to it. Actually, yeah, I do like that. Actually, it kind of goes with all the dark wood. So we've got this nice little viewing platform now overlooking the lake. And we could, for example, add some picnic benches or other benches onto it. So let's just actually duplicate the picnic bench we've used throughout our zoo and add a couple in here. Now we can't get too close to the edges most of the time, but you can get pretty close. So I think we'll just have a few of these around the outside. It would be a nice scenic spot to sit and have your picnic. <laughs> perhaps just three of those and then if we go back and find one of our benches as well let's grab this we could also perhaps put a bench kind of in the middle here overlooking the lake or something like that and it would also be a good idea to have a bin so let's again duplicate that or a couple of bins at least so we'll add those in as well and there we go we've got a kind of nice little shaded viewing platform overlooking our lake and again it adds a nice little feature to that very blank area there's nothing really to it but in in a real life zoo if you've got a huge lake like this i imagine there'd be a few places like this for a, a quiet moment away from the hustle and bustle so there is just so many landscaping tips that we could go over there's so many props in this game i'd love to explore but i think for today we're just going to finish it off by completing this area around the food court and around the otter habitat entrance and also around our new little viewing platform out here finishing this off with some of the same landscaping techniques that we've explored before so little path edge borders with plants and foliage in it essentially some more of our little tree trunk planters that we have done previously quite a long time ago in the zoo actually so we're going to go ahead and do that in a time lapse and as always i'll do it on 400 percent so if you want to see the whole thing live change youtube down to 0.25 on your playback speed turn off the volume for that as well and then you can enjoy it at real time, but we'll be back at the end to assess.
So we have added in a little bit more detailing alongside this river over here. Lots more kind of grass and reeds. I wanted to carry on the same theme that we had in the Asian small claw otter habitat. So that's why it's kind of very heavily reed based. And then we've got a nice kind of overgrown bush pattern here. So I really like how this little corner looks, particularly with some of these lily pads and things like that in the water around this shelter area. I hope Sims actually come up here and use it. I don't think they will because there's nothing there for them to actually go to, but it does look kind of cool. And then over here, we've just used some bushes to line up this path here using our stone border that we've used in the rest of this area here. Adding more long grass in here and a few little bushes. So it just kind of looks a little bit more overgrown and kind of uh, bedded in, shall we say. And then we've actually done this flower bed pattern over this side. So again, we use the rock borders, but I've kept nice open grass bits, which I thought was needed in places. Like we can't always cram everything in. But I really actually quite like how this looks with this flower bed border in front of the little classic kind of mini fence path edge here. The pink and purple, we come over here, we've got the bright flowers on our fountain. We can click play and just see that in action there. <laughs> so many bright flowers. And again, just continued this border on round this side over here too. So that looks nice up next to the food court, I think, again, with the open grass. And then we've done a little bit over here. So I added in some sand texture underneath, which is pretty similar to what we did this side and a few more of the tropical plants just around the sloth house entrance here. And then added in this little staff only kind of gateway. The only trouble is that the rope doesn't fit across our makeshift archway here. So we've got a little bit sticking out either side. I think we can kind of pretend that that's the fixtures and fittings for the rope entrance there, <laughs> hopefully. We've got a couple of little chains with a hanging sign, which I quite like. So that's a, a good way to use these signs rather than just placing them flat onto walls or flat onto that kind of archway post that we have in there. So enjoying that and then a bit more bushing behind our Asian small clawed otter sign in this corner. Then I've actually decided to use the wooden posts in the run up to the walkthrough entrance because I feel like it's quite fitting with our wooden gateway that we have there. So that feels kind of like quite natural and nice. So I really like how this little kind of walkway area is sitting around our big food court area here. Pleased with how that's come out and I've added in lots more signs. So we've got this one here, which I thought was quite a poignant place coming over the bridge. So signs to various different places. And of course we'll update and change these as we go through the game and build more areas out. We also have another one here, for example, so pointing in various different directions as you come out of the sloth house uh, from over there, or the toilets actually, <laughs> from this side. I have also finished off some of these borders around here too. But yeah, kind of pleased with how it's looking in this little area that we've focused on for now. Um, still a lot more of this to do as we continue to build out our zoo, but hopefully that's given you some different ideas, particularly with the flower bed designs here and the mulch a bit of a makeshift fountain with our really 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 wonky fountain jets there. So we still have an absolute ton more landscaping to do across this zoo particularly this newer area over here around the raccoons and skunks and monkey island so we'll come on to that in future episodes but for today that is going to be it so if you have enjoyed the video likes comments and shares are really greatly appreciated and keep those suggestions for what else you want to see in this zoo coming. I would love to take your suggestions on what you want to see, what you want to learn, what type of habitats you want, whether it's walkthrough, ex certain exhibits, certain animals, please do let me know in the comments below. And while you wait for more content, please do check out one of the videos on screen. But thank you so much for tuning in and I'll catch you again next time. Bye bye.